Welcome again to Eye on the Tigers News. We're glad you've joined us. I'm Melissa Greco. And I'm Andrea Ross. And here's the news we're following for you. The World Health Organization is pressing the search for an Ebola vaccine and hopes to begin testing two experimental versions as early as January and on more than 20,000 frontline health care workers and others in West Africa's hot zone, a bigger rollout than envisioned just a few months ago. An effective vaccine would not in itself be enough to stop the outbreak. For one thing, there probably wouldn't be enough doses to go around, but it could give important protection to the medical workers who are central to the effort. More than 200 of them have died from the disease. Former President Bill Clinton will stop in Syracuse on Friday to lead a Get Out the Vote event for U.S. Representative Dan Maffei only 10 days before the election, according to Syracuse.com. Clinton will speak late Friday afternoon at Syracuse Hancock International Airport at a Strengthening the Middle Class rally that is free and open to the public. Doors will open at 4.30 p.m. at Syracuse Landmark Aviation Hangar. No tickets are required. Buffet is in a close race with Republican challenger John Katko. New York State is expected to soon require high schools to train students in CPR. Governor Andrew Cuomo on Tuesday signed into a law a measure directing the state's commissioner of education to come up with a CPR training curriculum. Groups such as the American Heart Association has pushed to make the training mandatory for all high school students, citing cases in which lives were saved by someone performing CPR. The training curriculum would include instructions on the use of automatic defibrillators. There's no firm timetable as to when the requirement will go into effect. Authorities are investigating whether three teenage girls from suburban Denver, who may have been trying to join Islamic State militants in Syria, have friends or associates with similar intentions. A U.S. official said the evidence gathered so far made it clear that the girls, two sisters, ages 17 and 15, and their 16-year-old friend, were headed to Syria to join militants from the Islamic State. The girls were detained in Frankfurt, Germany, and were headed to Turkey. Toys R Us is pulling its four collectible dolls based on characters from AMC's hit series Breaking Bad after taking heat from a Florida mom who launched a petition campaign last week. The dolls are based on the series about Walter White, a high school chemistry teacher who turns into a crystal meth dealer, and his sidekick, Jesse Pinkman. The figures have a detachable bag of cash and a bag of methamphetamines. The wet and raw weather will continue for at least another couple of days. With some details, here's Patrick Howell. Clouds and cool temperatures will remain the order of the day for the rest of our Wednesday, with maybe a peak of sunshine. As for Thursday into Friday, the storm system off the east coast will remain stalled. We'll have on and off showers for the rest of our Wednesday before more steady and heavy rain hits us for Thursday. Showers persist for Friday before a respite. Saturday and Sunday will feature times of sun and temperatures pushing into the 60s. Kennedy Lamb has a look at what's happening in sports. Just one year ago, Mexico football didn't have enough players to finish its season. Fast forward to this week and they're preparing to take on West Hill in the first round of the playoffs. What a difference a year makes. Here's what senior Austin Gain had to say leading up to Friday's game. We've been going harder. I mean, we have, we realize that we have to step it up. I mean, it's postseason, so I mean, we realize that not a ton of teams have the ability to do what we're doing and, uh, you know, it's one of those weeks where we know we can't mess around and we know what uh, is leaning on this game. I mean, this game means a lot to a lot of people. I mean, not just us, but our coaches, our friends in school, our, you know, the parents around the community, really. The San Francisco Giants wasted little time taking charge of Game 1 of the World Series, jumping to a 5-0 lead by the fourth inning, thanks in large part to Hunter Pence's two-run first inning home run. The Giants went on to a 7-1 victory as they head into Game 2 tonight. New York's Court of Appeals has ruled two former Syracuse ball boys will be allowed to sue head coach Jim Beheim for slander, the Associated Press reports. Beheim refuted allegations by Bobby Davis and Mike Lang in 2011 that assistant coach Bernie Fine had molested them when they were children. Beheim said that the pair was only looking to make money and that the allegations were false. Davis and Lang claim Beheim slandered them, and a court ruling on Tuesday will allow them to proceed with the case. 
Let's hear from Nathaniel Schrader, who has today's calendar and a look at Today in History. Today's calendar shows up at the school's SAD club meets today. Tomorrow, groups of juniors and seniors will travel to BOCES for the college information fair. The girls' volleyball team travels to Hannibal for its regular season game. On October 22, 1962, President John F. Kennedy announced an air and naval blockade of Cuba following the discovery of Soviet missile bases on the island. On this date in 1937, bank robber Charles Pretty Boy Floyd was shot to death by federal agents at a farm in East Liverpool, Ohio. That's all for us today. Thanks for being with us and look up for us again on Friday. For the staff of I the Tigers News, I'm Andrea Ross. And I'm Melissa Greco.